So Rachel, you want to connect, but there's a language problem. Yes. I'm struggling to describe a work entitled 999 Years, 13 Square Metres, The Future Belongs to Ghosts. It was a collaboration between Cecile B. Evans and myself. Part of the Whitechapel Gallery Group exhibition, Is This Tomorrow? Inspired by their former landmark exhibition, This Is Tomorrow, where 37 British architects, painters and sculptors were invited to work in pairs, including Richard Hamilton and Alison and Peter Smithson. Both exhibitions involved collaborations between artists and architects. The second exhibition became a sort of shy dialogue with its 1956 predecessor. So what is the challenge in describing the work? I think of 999 years, 13 square metres, the future belongs to ghosts as a storytelling system. It's readable from many perspectives. But which story should be told? That of engineering, fine art, architecture, microbiology, apocalypse? If it's a story, then why define it in advance by a disciplinary label? Because I want to draw attention to the microbial intelligence that we envisaged at the core of the installation's conversation with gallery visitors. This was a way of drawing on logics of different worlds, electrons, surfaces, atmospheres and so on. Still, I'm unsure how to approach this perspective. To collide, unlike fabrics, or language games, through the logics of different worlds, sounds to me similar to the generic promiscuity and linguistic diversity of the prose poem, the exploration of which swiftly led me into interdisciplinarity. I think of the installation itself as an environmental framework that makes possible more ambitious kinds of storytelling or conversations, something that can produce narratives relevant to today. I like this idea, but I'm unsure what you mean by environmental framework. Think of the way that unlike bodies can retain their generative agency, yet still surprise us by holding conversations that seem to be coherent while occurring outside our conceptual frames. I consider these conversations to be spatial transactions that can be shared across different agencies, species, and even materials. Why transactions? Transactions carry meaning. Think of microbes as the most environmental of all beings. They process benevolent environmental materials like nutrients or chemistry to regenerate the base of the biosphere, something they've done for over three billion years. This is not a one-way process. They respond in kind to the goods an environment provides with their own offerings made with wet technologies, plasmids, transposons, organelles and versatile metabolisms within their guts. They're visceral creatures, snuggled into the deepest recesses of our landscapes. Their motivation and meaning reside within the very processes of life. The term ecology or ecologies stands in for such a complex exchange. If you think about it, it appears everywhere today. Urban ecology, material ecologies, Timothy Morton's ecology without nature, Isabel Stenger's ecologies of practice, the schizoanalytic ecology of Felix Guattari, the dark ecology of Paul Kingsnorth. It's almost as if thinking has alighted on this term as a way of absolving us from thinking through the specifics of exchange, a way of abdicating human decisions to natural systems. Is the term, in your view, about to reach a point of exhaustion? Ecology is weakly descriptive of a few principles of a life world and devoid of real meaning relevant to the grand purposes it proposes to support. Recently popularised by Timothy Morton as the neutral face of nature, it is in fact, as Pedder Anker observes, a deeply divisive and imperial concept associated with the colonisation of native lands. Today it's transformed via modernity into something that's little more than a greened list of categories appended to the cybernetic notion of systems. Such a framework tells us little about the limits relationships, materials, values and meaningful transactions within a specific life world. It is a sightless slogan, 
devoid of compassion and vitality itself. A sightless slogan, devoid of compassion and vitality itself. That's uh, an original and possibly brilliant critique of ecology. But how might we speak of the journey from the laboratory to the world of microbes? Can we engage in alien language without resorting to imperial or colonizing tropes? It's unlikely to be a pleasant experiment. Let's assume it's the stench that hits you first. You find a fountain of decay. 400 sickly sweet volatile organic compounds vomiting forth cadaverine, putrescine, lysine, methionine, methane, carboxylic acids, aromatics, sulfurs, alcohols, nitrates, aldehydes, ketones, microorganisms relentlessly gnawing on rotting flesh. Then you notice the human detritus strewn across the ground. It's home to multiple biofilms, motile microbes and their photosynthetic partners that flourish together in elastic polymer nets whose uncertain nature sucks up whatever sustenance they can summon from their environment. Light, sulfide, rarefied oxygen, while trying to say grace. This is microbiology. Not a single colony isolates on petri plates or in broth cultures, but in its raw, natural state. Biological couplings and mats of undefinable biomass hang, preying on excrements, sticky surfaces, plumes of air, slugging it out, angels and demons. Perhaps in the question where do worlds connect? We've arrived at a starting point for my story. 